The Ioannis Virtual Plaza is a museum extension designed by Nieta Sabajano Architects, located in the centre of Graz in Austria. The extension connects three museums through an innovative underground wing. These three museums are part of the same institution and, and the projects set out to endow a common public entrance into the buildings, which does not detract from the architectural quality of the existing buildings. Although the firm is consistently contemporary in their design and choices of forms, they have succeeded in realising an architectural language that is responsive to the historical buildings, yet independent of them. My part of the case study report looks specifically into the way the site has been carefully curated to create a way to extend the existing programme of the museum in a way that does not spoil the surrounding urban context, the landscape and other landmarks. The extension has been designed to enhance the visuality and spatial organisation of the site and improve the relationship between the two existing buildings which were previously separated by a courtyard. The diagrams here show the location of the Ioannian Museum in the historical centre of Graz, which is known to have an impressive and diverse landscape. It is surrounded by other important landmarks and historical buildings. The architects therefore wanted to preserve the historical context by bringing people beneath the surface of the ground, where new accommodation could be provided to enhance the uses and qualities of the museum without spoiling the existing landscape. The architects have used the space provided for the development extremely efficiently by leaving the surface free for open horizontal movement between the two existing buildings containing parts of the museum. The space below the surface then provides access to the two buildings with reception spaces, a conference hall and reading areas. The voids, the voids are used as an organisational device which helps organise the extension, separating public and private space but framing the existing architecture and using the existing roofscape as a backdrop. There are five separate entrances within the new extension which easily links the museum together and the site can be accessed from the north and south. Public spaces on the first level below the ground, which means that area gets the most light, whilst displaying the historic facades of the historical building through the glass. Perforations subtly blend in visually with the surrounding landscape and illuminate the area at night, which enhances our view of the area and allows us to engage with the heritage. The concept emerged from the intention of acting within the strict limits of the horizontal plane of the city. The extension provides the three buildings with one common entrance. There is one large cone with an elevator that takes you to floor minus one. This is the main entrance. From this floor you can then access any of the three buildings and proceed upwards. Floor minus two can also be accessed from stairs or lift on floor minus one. The cones are used as organisational devices and also bring light into the spaces. The function of the space is a response to the amount of light the space receives. Floor minus one includes an auditorium, cafe and shop and receives much more light than floor minus two. The diagrams here explain this. The depth of floor minus two makes it difficult to receive as much light, although two of the cones do reach this floor. Most of the space here is lit artificially. The extension frames and enhances the existing buildings that can be seen across the courtyard. The urban fabric of Graz is used as a backdrop so the existing visuality is not ruined. The cone perforations are carefully positioned to filter light into the underground extension and the choice of cones as a shape is aesthetically pleasing and communicates well with the surroundings. Each perforation differs visually due to altering size, sizes and shapes. Large amounts of accommodation can now be used beneath the ground without visually destroying the heritage of the museum. The glass enhances the heritage and allows us to directly engage with the surrounding historic architecture. The architecture firm have key themes they explore in all of their work. Sabajano is interested in both the sky and the ground. He states that the most ancient architecture were bound to the ground and the most contemporary architecture tries to fly. This project focuses on the ground, but in the same year in Graz, we also worked on a project in the roofs. The architect uses Ground Zero as an example of how people are so amazed with underground spaces. It's almost childlike, like a memory, he states. The Void is another theme in their work. Nieto Sabajano uses written music as an example to explain this. The written music is full of richness, variations of one single thing. However, what is significant is the silence or the absence which is as important as the note itself. This expresses the idea of the void. The void in this design is used as an organisational device, eliminating the spaces below. 
The firm are also interested in pattern and repetitions of a single element. Here it is the repetition of the cone or the void. Savagiano is interested in only having what is strictly necessary to convey their idea. The Chinese vase explains this. Although full of cracks, the space is still there and the object can still be recognised. Their interest in the geometric pattern came from working in an Islamic town in Spain on a previous project. Islamic architecture is full of geometry and repeating patterns. We see this influence in the floor plans of, the, of their work here. The firm is also interested in creating a dialogue between the existing architecture and the new architecture in the, all of their work. In this specific design, they do this through reflection. There is a continuous reflection of the old buildings in the cones so that wherever you are inside, you can always perceive the buildings outside in a different way, establishing then a dialogue between the two. My task was to compare the buildings to others of its type. The criteria that I used to compare these for, for buildings are concept, which means the theory behind the design, how the context influenced this theory, challenges, usage, and language. First, I compared the Austrian Museum extension to a museum pavilion made by the same architecture firm. For the first buildings, I looked at sustainability and its three pillars, environmental, societal, and economical, in addition to the others. Core idea was the void, the idea of the void, where the void represents lost architecture and missing geometry. What ties these two projects together is the challenge of their sites. Graz, you were handling a UNESCO protected site, and in Spain, you were building on the on top of the ruins of a lost city. Due to the different climates and briefs, the void is used differently. In Austria, they want to get as much light in as possible, while in Spain, they want to protect from the light. In terms of sustainability, the builds are minimally sustainable. For the Ioannou Spital, the architects mentioned that they included some energy efficient methods. However, they don't mention uh, which or how. In uh, Madinat al Zahra, the building's layout allows for passive ventilation, restricts sun, and the concrete walls also help absorb some of that heat. Next, I compare the product to the cube in France. I chose the, the building because Stanson Williams, the architect, took an opposite approach from the Ioana Umsvirtel. He had to build an extension to a museum in a very narrow space. For that reason, I think building over the ground was the right choice. This means that the scale of the building is smaller and with a, a more restricted program. An interesting thing is that Williams mentions wanting to create a dialogue between the past and the present. And that is exactly what Nieto Sobejano were intending in their, their proposals. The focus is on light and airiness through materiality and spatial arrangements, just like the plaza. Lastly, I explore the famous Louvre Pyramid by I. M. Pei. Once more, the theory of the dialogue between old and new makes an appearance. Pei spent four months theorizing, analyzing, and synthesizing a concept before he accepted the project. He knew the Louvre's importance and historical value, and that whatever he would design will have to belong there. He did not see fit designing over the ground because he did not want to interrupt the existing museum views. In this diagram, I am explaining some similarities and differences of the four buildings and how they tie in together. From analysing the Uranus Virtual in context and comparing it to similar extensions, demonstrates the innovative and sensitive approach Nieto Savajano have worked in this design. It creates a dialogue with the existing architecture but does not alter it. Working within the strict limits of a World Heritage Site, the design respects the surrounding heritage, only puncturing the surface intermittently. The architecture's firm's interest in the ground and their theories of the void are explored in this design. Pattern and geometry are represented in the cones, which function as organisators, bringing light into the rooms below. 
Due to the building being underground, designing a space that felt aired and spacious and at the same time well lit and inviting was a challenge. The variation of the size and depth of the cones works to resolve this problem. The notion of memories and childlike hidden spaces emanate from this work. It evokes our fascination of going underground when we're so used to going up. Nieto Sobigiano successfully protected the heritage of the site whilst connecting the three museums in an original and creative way. We are going to show a video made for the architects to convey the message of the building.